Marley was dead to begin with. Not Bob Marley, Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley, now dead as a doornail, was a former partner to one Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge was a miser, proud of his business. More people owed him more money than ever before. He was the kind of guy who would sell a seesaw to a hermit. <laughs> Thank you. He regarded the death penalty as a potential parking place. What a crowd. When the candle maker shop burned down, Scrooge stood around and sang happy birthday. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Drive friendly. <clears throat> Scrooge was assisted by his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who, in spite of his poverty, kept babbling that it was a wonderful life. Now, here's the deal, Cratchit. I don't want you to put any more coal on that fire seat. I know I'm not ovulating, so it must be the fire. Oh, I guess a raise would be out of the question, right, Mr. Scrooge? <laughs> Cratchit, I'd give you a raise, but then I'd have to give myself one to stay even. Oh. And I don't need one. It's simple economics, see? Even a two-year-old can understand that. Uh-huh. What it can do is give you this big deposit to make when the treasury opens on the day after Christmas. Now, can you handle that? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, just remember, my door is always open. So stop making all that noise. Uh, Tiny Tim says every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. It's a wonderful life, isn't it, Mr. Scrooge? Uh, who's that at the door? Uh, Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge. It's your nephew, Fred. Merry Christmas, Bob Cratchit. Bye, humbug to you. What right do you have to be such a shower push, Uncle? You're rich enough. You've got enough money to buy a boy for his dog. Mm -hmm. You not only like to pass the Joneses, you like to humiliate them, too. Thank you, pretty slick. Slick Fred, that's what they call you. What right do you have to be merry? Deficit is written all over you. If I had my way, every idiot who goes around yapping Merry Christmas should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly in his heart. <laughs> Uncle Scrooge, I feel your pain. And with all due respect, Christmas is a kind, loving, charitable time. Bye. Share it with us tomorrow night, won't you? Nothing special, just a roast duck. Well, we really can't afford duck, but we did find a chicken with really big lips. Uh, we found a yummy Scottish recipe, too, or something they call chicken McLips. Uh-huh, and some of those strange herb biscuits, no doubt. <laughs> They're so good you could just inhale them. I bet. Well, forget it. Now, as you can see, I've got some charts to organize. Good afternoon, nephew. Well, if you change your mind, you know the address. It's the small white house on the corner. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's the one you tried to buy once. I know which one it is. Uh, Merry Christmas, Uncle. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I was just leaving. Pardon us, sir. Is the owner in? Uh, he's in there. The short one with the bad haircut. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, excuse me, but are you Mr. Marley or Mr. Scrooge? Mr. Marley died seven years ago this very night. I think I remember that now. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, the Marley magic continues with a new generation. Moving up the charts from number 40 to number 19, uh, here's Ziggy Marley with... Uh, now, that's, that's a different Marley. We've already covered that. My mistake. You must be Scrooge, then. My partner here and I wonder if you might make a slight donation for those who are challenged in these tough times. Right, Ed? Oh, you are correct, sir. <laughs> we usually do this on Labor Day, but this is a time when want is keenly felt. Yes! <laughs> what can I put you down for? Can I get a timpani? Now, why would anyone want to donate to what is already an intolerable welfare situation? But people are dying. Uh -oh. Fine, let them die on their own dime and decrease the surplus population while they're at it. Good day, gentlemen. Very well. In the meantime, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Uh, 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 Mr. Scrooge, more angel wings. Wings is right. <laughs> Two left wings, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, isn't Christmas wonderful, Mr. Scrooge? Christmas humbug. I suppose you want Christmas Day off, too, don't you? Well, uh, if it's convenient. It's not convenient. Listen, I'm not running this business like some town hall meeting. But since you must take the day off, be here all the earlier the next morning. Oh, oh thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, look, there, there's a young caroler at the window. God rest ye merry gentlemen, may nothing you dismay. I'm wondering if my debt to you, you could forgive this day. Uh, forget it. I'll see to it that you'll be making payments until the 12th of never. And that's a long, long time. Scrooge locked up his shop and made his way home, avoiding the merriment around him. He maneuvered his way through the dark to his front door. Turning the key, he was startled to see in the large door knocker the face of his dead partner, Marley. Not that Marley. 
Thank you. The knocker seemed to have Marley's face, eyes, and hair. I is that you, Jacob Marley? Fear not, I've run the business well. 56 indictments, no convictions. But quickly, the apparition became a knocker again. Suddenly, Scrooge was overwhelmed by a loud clanking noise oh, what's this from now? a visage coming up the stairs right through his door. <sighs> it stood there suspended between space and time, a face with heavy jowls that clanked together with great force. Who oh, the blazes are you? Are you that crazy ant we had locked up in the basement? Uh, in life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. I know. People still remember your marketing campaign. Pay for it in 48 easy payments, or 12 incredibly hard ones. Now what's the deal with the jowls here? What, what's happening I wear the jowls I forged in life. I've had no pace these seven years dead, traveling all the time, no rest, no peace. Uh, it's as if all my hopes and dreams had been erased. But uh, you were always a good man of business, uh, weren't you? Business? Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. But, I, I but no regret can make amends for one's life's opportunities misused. Uh, that would be wrong. Uh, that would be a cover-up. You were always a good friend to me. Pay attention to this message, Scrooge. You'll be haunted by three spirits. Expect the first one tomorrow, when the bell tolls one. The second on the next night at the same hour. Uh, and the third on the next night, when the clock strikes twelve. In case you forget all that, Here's a schedule. Thank you. Goodbye, Ebenezer. You won't have me to kick around anymore. Now, wait. Uh, spirit, don't leave. But the spirit floated out the open window. And as Scrooge looked out, he saw other disembodied spirits wandering the earth in torment. <laughs> It's funny, but they all look like disbarred lawyers. Well, I'm not surprised. They say the only difference between a dead lawyer and a dead possum is the skid marks in front of the possum. Well, I think it's about time to get some shut-eye. I'm plum tuckered. I feel like I could sleep for days. that be? Hey, it's still dark. Did I screw up that daylight savings thing again? Let, let's see now. Fall back, spring ahead, or the other way around. I, wait, wait. The spirit said I'd have my first ghostly visitor at one o'clock. Huh. I don't know if I can stay up for another hour. Hello again, everyone. Hello, Ebenezer. What? What the blazes? Are you the spirit that was supposed to show up? <laughs> Your assessment is accurate, my friend. I'm the ghost of Christmas has been. Here to scan the highlights in the life of one Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, no offense, but I'm not a big one for looking to the past. I prefer to sweep that under the rug if you don't mind. Leave my hair out of this. Uh, this happens to be my mistletoe toupee. But I now, put the pusillanimous posture away and consider this upcoming soldier a chance to reflect on past glories, such as the young. <laughs> I'd like to see what else is in store for the future, if you don't mind. Nonsense. You have the makings of a heavyweight in the ring of mankind. Follow me, and let's go to the highlights. I, I recognize this neighborhood. It's where I grew up. I helped support my family with a paper route. Used to ride a horse to deliver. Then I was off to school where I maintained uh, a four-point... Not to deprecate your prodigious remembrance of things that once were. But please, leave the details to yours truly. Sorry. The ghost of Christmas has been. Now... Recognize this festive domicile? Why, it's Mr. Fezziwigs, where I learned to become a financial wizard. Do you recognize that lonely young rookie in the corner? That's me. I remember now. My, my girlfriend, Belle, had just left me. She complained I never listened to her, or something like that. Yeah, it appears to this reporter that your mind got fuzzy when your skin cleared up. Spirit, get me out of here. I'm, I'm suddenly feeling so sick, I, I'd have to get better to die. Pay attention to what has been, Scrooge, because when that final gun goes off, you don't want the gravestone to read, I never play the game. Hold on tight! Suddenly, Scrooge found himself back in the familiar surroundings of his bedchamber. I'm back, and the ghost of Christmas has been is gone. Thank goodness. I spent eight years in Fezziwig's land of fantasy. Mr. Feel Good Spendthrift. <laughs> 
I sure don't need to go back there again. Well, what I need is a little more. Scrooge. Ebony sauce Scrooge. Well, what now? This is about as much fun as, as fire ants in an outhouse. Who are you? What are you doing out there in my living room? Come in and know me better. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon my body. Have you ever seen such pectorals? Look at my bountiful horn of plenty. Hooey! It's as stuffed as a ballot box in a Mexican primary. All right, Scrooge. Grab hold of my robe. Buckle up. It's hasta la vista time. Uh, I'll be straight with you, Spirit. Last night I, I learned you can teach an old dog new tricks, so... Very well. Conduct me where you will. Here we go. Scrooge and the Spirit began an airborne journey into the wondrous land of Christmas present, whose boundaries are that of holiday imagination. Listen, Spirit, uh, this has been a lovely flight and all, but I'm so hungry, if someone laid a bag of peanuts on top of my head, my tongue would slap my brains out. Have you got any in-flight snacks? Not doing landing. Welcome to the Cratchit Cottage. Please check to see if you have all your belongings. Uh, 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 isn't that a wonderful life, Mrs. Cratchit? An angel got his wings, an angel got his wings. <laughs> Quiet oh. down, Tiny Tim. Mm. It's only the bell for the oven. Spirit, something here smells better than perfume at a school dance. Oh, here it is, everybody. Fresh from the oven. Goose Cratchit a la Oh, that smells pretty good. What exactly is that, dear? Oh, it's basically an orange cooked in goose juice. Uh, uh, I, I propose a toast to you all, my dear family. A Merry Christmas to us all. Yeah, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> God bless Belinda and Martha and Master Peter. And my new suit that fits way too tight. <laughs> uh, spirit, what's the deal with this tiny Tim? After dinner, I think I'll go down to the theater. All by myself. <laughs> Tell you what, that boy ain't working with a full string of lights. Is he going to make it, Spirit? Uh, I see a vacant seat in the theater. They must be showing Last Action Hero. No, wait. It's something called Santa's Magic Lap. Hmm. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, he won't be back. Uh-oh. That sounds to me like the ringer's broke and it's wash day at the orphanage. Can't anything be done to save him? Hmm, what about the future? Can Tiny Tim be saved? Save me, please! We'll be back after this with the exciting conclusion to our story. Like I said, if his shadows remain unaltered, he's a goner. But as you once said, if he's going to disappear, he better do it and decrease the surplus population. Hmm. I think Tiny Tim's future Depends on you, Scrooge. Uh, never say depends to an old person. Listen up. Bob Cratchit is about to propose another toast. So Mr. Scrooge, founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. Where was he when I was slaving over a hot goo? Now, now remember, it's Christmas, dear. I How don't can I toast the man who's mean enough to go to the bakery, take all the numbers, and sell them to the fat customers. Uh, I've had my fill of this spirit. Let's try another party. Maybe an independent party. No problemo. Hold on tight. And while we're in flight, please fill out the card to join our frequent near-miss program. Ah, what the heck? Scrooge and the spirit continued their journey through that middle ground between light and shadow to another dimension in the party zone. I recognize this place. This here's my nephew Fred's place. Look, look, they're having a party. Oh, I think it's high time for young Fred here to reward our visitation to his humble abode, quid pro quo. Oh, oh, that, that is to say, oh, he should lead us in a party game. Yes, yes. Uh, very well. Here's a game that shouldn't be too taxing. Nephew Fred's not too dumb. Nobody likes to be taxed. But words are plentiful, deeds are few. So let's see if he keeps his promise. All right, I'll give you some clues here. You tell me who I'm talking about. He works hard for his money, but then extortion isn't easy. <laughs> the odds of guessing the answer after one clue are the same as pulling a man on the moon. Well, that's the way it is. All right, all right, here's another clue. As a lad, he got his girlfriend a mink, 
but it was always fighting with the dog. <laughs> you know what bugs me? When the host says the clues won't be taxing, and then they turn out to be very taxing. That's what I call retroactive taxing. Yes, yes. And another thing, as long as we're talking about cheap people, don't you hate it when a boss feels he shouldn't over-commercialize Christmas by handing out bonuses? I always give a bonus to the paper boy. I put five shillings in an envelope and toss it on my roof. Okay, okay, how about this clue? He told his clerk he wouldn't give him a two-week notice, but he would give him a ten-minute head start. <laughs> well, I'm afraid we'll have to negotiate some more clues. Oh, hey, that won't be necessary, my friends, because from my What It's Worth department, anybody can see that the miserly gentleman Fred here has been describing is his own Uncle Scrooge. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> uh, he's been good for a lot of laughs, that's for sure. Hey, here's to Uncle Scrooge. Let's all raise a glass. Here's, here's to Uncle, Uncle Scrooge, Scrooge for his horse. <laughs> <laughs> now, hold on here, Spirit. I've had enough of these insults from Fred. If you ask me, that boy's got a mouthful of grin and a handful of thank you. Very well. Consider this visit terminated. In fact, my life on this earth will be terminated very shortly. <laughs> Tonight at midnight, I will be gone, and the time is uh, drawing near. Uh, uh, spirit, uh, excuse me, but there are two wretched, frightful, hideous children crawling out from under your robe. <laughs> spirit, uh, are these two morons yours? You must be joking. They belong to mankind. This one is ignorance. <laughs> And this one is want. Beware of them both, for if you don't mend your miserly ways, they will rule the earth. The hour has come. Beware, Scrooge. Beware! Beware! Scrooge looked around, and the ghost of Christmas present and his two moronic companions had disappeared. It was then he remembered the prediction of a third spirit. Suddenly, this strange intersection in Scrooge's Shadowland was disturbed by a new hooded phantom. Where'd they go? Now, now what's this? A phantom approaching silently like a, like a field mouse wetting on a cotton ball. Now what's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Well, I'm not surprised. The hen that lays the biggest egg does the least amount of cackling. You must be the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You know, I got a strange feeling my time is shorter than the chigger's eyebrow. Well, let's get on with it. Consider, if you will, several merchants locked in conversation about the passing of a deceased miser they held in low esteem. He, he's dead, I tell you. Dead. I thought he'd never die. When did it happen, huh? Last night, I believe. Bad things happen to bad people as time goes by. I know these men. They're merchants. Who are they talking about, Spirit? Ugh, he sounds awful. It'd take me only a minute to kill that snake. But if he didn't make amends, he'll regret it. Maybe not today or tomorrow but shoon him for the rest of his life hereafter. Well, if you ask me, I think you should have taken my advice and worked as a postal civil servant. Job security and a uniform you can wear with pride. All I know is he doesn't do any business with any of us candlestick makers. Never bought one of my thousand points of light, that's for sure. I'll say this for him, though. He was an environmental moneylender. Thanks to him, there are more townspeople living outside than ever before. <laughs> Look at him now, the man who will be king. He's got to be asking himself, what's it all about? Is it just for the moment we live? What's it all about when you've thought it out, Alfie? Yeah, what about that, Alfie? I don't have a clue. But obviously, he was psycho. That skin flint was for the birds. <laughs> the silent phantom, like a ghost ship, transported Scrooge through the fog and shrouded night to a low-brow pawn shop where the proprietor, old Joel, welcomed three vagrants peddling the worldly goods of the aforementioned recently departed miser. Now what is this place, Spirit? Who are these people? Why aren't they out working? Well, well, looky here. Three money grubbers looking for their five easy pieces of silver. They thought the banks were unfair. Wait till they get low to me. Ah, uh, get ready, old Joe. The three of us have scored a little something from the old miser's estate. Looks to me like you robbed a loony bin. Leave the loons out of this, mister. Now, what would you give me for these bedclothes? Not much, you old Betty. 
The trap doors are a little too tattered for me. Granted, he was no knight in shining armor. Maybe you better start looking for a few good men. These things must be worth something, you old poop. Tell me the truth. The truth? You can't handle the truth. Uh, fortunately, my raid upon the old man's miserable estate yielded a more lucrative pile of paraphernalia. Spirit? This guy's a dog that just won't hunt. Well, you get no terms of endearment over these, Sparky. What am I gonna do with a few seals, a pencil case, and a worthless piece of jewelry? Ah, uh, you could always start a home shopping network. Oh, who needs all that worthless jewelry? Uh, 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 can we talk here? What about this fabulous China? What do I look like, sweetheart? The mayor of Chinatown? Spirit, I have this strange feeling these people have been talking about me. My ears are burning, and that's quite a blaze. Please. Tell me I can make things right. I'm still worried about that tiny Tim. Show me he's okay. The ghost of Christmas yet to come then guided Scrooge to the home of Bob Cratchit, where the Cratchit family mourned the passing of tiny Tim. There's a signpost up ahead. Who put that signpost here? Oh, my aching head. It's humming like a ten-penny nail hit by a rusty ball-peen hammer. Uh, uh, did, did you hear that, everybody? That strange bell? That's Tiny Tim getting his wings. Oh. Let's all take a moment to contemplate Tim's final words. Uh, uh, what, what were they, Mother? Oh, let's see. muckalaka lucka hi muckka hi ho uh, Well, uh, uh, at least he left an epitaph we can understand. That, uh, right, Mother? Yeah, it says, I know you are, but what am I? Oh, uh, see, it's, it's a wonderful afterlife, too. Come on, everybody, let's sing. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never uh, uh, dear, uh, uh, isn't there some chore to attend to? Come on, everybody. Spirit, surely something could have been done to save Tiny Tim. I'm, I'm suddenly very tired. I'm afraid I ain't got no giddy-up in my get-along. Please, can't we go home now? The spirit complied with Scrooge's request. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. Next stop, the graveyard. Spirit, that giant sucking sound tells me that my mortal coil here has sprung a leak. Now come straight with me. Was that dead man everyone referred to as a miser me? Was it? I mean, sure, I've heard a few disparaging remarks, but that's hardly a scientific poll. And why are we in a graveyard? My house is over that way. Whose grave is this here? I'm afraid to look. Is it too late to take door number two? All right, hold your horses. I'll look, I'll look. Gravestone says... Ebenezer Scrooge! No, 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 spirit. No, look, I, I'm not the man I was. I, I mean, I will not be the man I must have been. Look, look, I, I got some charts here to prove it. As you can plainly see from this pie chart, here are the things that will be, and here are the things that may be, and... Now, could I just finish this, please? Look, don't be bored. Spirit, give me another chance. I can set things straight. I can make a positive difference in this lifetime. Spirit! 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 What's this? I'm back in my own bed. I've been given another chance. I'm as happy as a pig in a pile of slop. Hey! Hey! Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! It's daytime, and what a glorious day! No fog, no mist, just bright and clear. Hey! You there, boy! Yes, sir, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, what day is it? Today? Why, golly, it's Christmas Day! Huh, Christmas Day! Well, of course, the spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Boy, I'll pay you to go get the prized turkey from the poultry shop down the street. Can you do that for me? Shazam! I'll not only do that, I'll sing for you, too. We three kings of uh, 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 that, That's fine. Uh, just get the turkey. Yes, sir, I'll be right back. What a remarkable boy. What a strange voice. Here it is. A bigger turkey than I am. Sean, <laughs> you got a wacky way with words. Now, I want you to get a cab and take this turkey to Bob Cratchit's. You mean you want me to give him the bird? No, no, see, that was the old me. I want Cratchit's family to have a fine Christmas turkey. Our newly reformed Mr. Scrooge decided to make the holiday rounds. He had not gone far when he ran into the two gentlemen who had asked for a contribution the day before. Well, if it isn't Mr. Scrooge, the man who turned down our request for a contribution for the challenge. Yes. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, let me attempt to ask your pardon by offering you this check. 
uh, consider it just a down payment. Can I get a tempity? My dear Mr. Scrooge, congratulations. You just took over the top spot in this week's Top 40 Contributor Survey. <laughs> Have a good day, gentlemen, and Merry Christmas to you. Scrooge soon made his way to his nephew Fred's house to spread his newfound holiday cheer. Now, here's the deal, Fred, see? From now on, I'll pay for the holiday meals if you let me eat them here. Is that a deal? That uh, sounds like a fair trade agreement to me. Good. From now on, it's united we stand. And the next day, Scrooge mended his ways with his clerk, Bob Cratchit. I tell you what, I'm going to be like a second father to Tiny Tim, Bob Cratchit. I think that boy needs all the guidance he can get. Oh, thank you, Mr. And, Scrooge. And I'm also giving you a raise. Oh. If you can't make it, you can't spend it. Oh. Now, don't ever forget that. Mr. Scrooge, hi, Here, hi. Uh, just add it to the big deposit I gave you two days ago. The one you're supposed to take to the treasury today? But, but Mr. Scrooge, I gave that deposit to Uncle Billy to take care of. Hmm. According to my employee charts here, Cratchit, you don't have an Uncle Billy. See? You got the Mrs., Belinda, Martha, Master Peter, and two young Cratchits, and Tiny Tim. Oh. But no Uncle Billy. No, this is terrible. I gave the money to an imposter. We're ruined. Oh, I wish I'd never been born. Did you hear that, Clarence? There's a, there's a fella down there who wishes he'd never been born. Oh, he must be very, very depressed, which reminds me, I don't have any wings yet. Well, here's a chance for you to earn your wings. Go on down there and, 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 and set things straight. Prove to Cratchit it's, it's a wonderful life after all, and that all God's creatures are created equal. Well, the obvious exception of all the rotten wabbits. <laughs> cameo of a man named Bob Cratchit, who after spending a lifetime of toil in the employ of one Ebenezer Scrooge, is about to be transported to the small town of Bedford Falls with a new identity, George Bailey. But that's another episode for another time in another cassette that'll cost you another $9.95 or so, depending on the markup. Capitalism. I love it. God bless us, everyone. <laughs>